Starting off this countdown, we have the prophecies. A biblical preacher believes that the end of the world is near, as almost all the prophecies laid out in the book of Revelation have been fulfilled, meaning the apocalypse is going to happen soon. Basically, in the book of Revelation, the seven seals are the apocalyptic vision seen by John of Patmos. And apparently, we have one more prophecy to fulfill before we reach the seventh seal, which marks the end of the world. Here are some of the seals that we have fulfilled. The sixth seal talks about an earthquake, followed by the sun turning black and the moon turning blood red and mountains and islands disappearing underwater. Well, he believes that this happened with the Lisbon earthquake in November of 1755. A very disastrous earthquake caused a tsunami that covered cities. Then 25 years later in New England, the sun was completely blacked out by noon. They called it New England's dark day. That's not all. Over the years, we have had a number of blood moons where the moon appears red. So that right there fulfills all of the points in the sixth seal, meaning we are now on to the seventh seal, the final one. In our ninth spot today, we have the underwater cities. Within the next couple of years, a number of big cities and places are predicted to be underwater, like New York, Key West, Florida, Fiji, Bangladesh, Miami, Florida, Bangkok, and New Orleans. Environmentalist Jeff Goodall had this to say about Miami. There's a Virtually no scenario under which you can imagine Miami existing at the end of the century. Conditions are getting so bad in Miami that the city may have to soon raise its structures to stay above water. In fact, it's believed the sea level could rise anywhere from 10 to 30 feet by the end of the century. For Key West, Florida, it's said by 2060, over 60% of the livable land there will have been flooded. In 2100, 95% of livable land will be flooded. And in 2100, 95% of livable livable land there will be flooded. And then we have Bangkok. Bangkok is sinking at a rate of more than 1 to 2 centimeters a year. Currently is only 0.5 to 2 meters above the water. Much of Bangkok is already lower than the sea level, so it's believed that it could be fully below sea level by 2030. These are all terrifying statistics, and most of it is due to climate change and the sea levels rising. In our 8th spot today, we have outer space. It's crazy to think about how small Earth is in comparison to the entire universe. At any second, some massive asteroid could come hurling down towards the Earth and kill us all. Well, guess what? NASA has said that over the next couple of years, there are going to be more close calls. As in, big asteroids will be flying closer and closer to Earth. All we need is for a rogue one to come directly our way and we're toast. Moving on to number seven, we have Nostradamus. If you're a long time subscriber of this channel, then you should know who Nostradamus is by now. For those of you who don't know, well then you gotta subscribe to our channel and binge watch all our old videos. Just kidding, but Nostradamus was a famous seer and prophet. He wrote a book which included all of his future predictions and a number of them have come true already, which is freaky. Now according to Nostradamus, we are currently headed towards the end of the world. First off, he predicted that a worldwide famine will occur. He said, and I quote, After great trouble for humanity, a greater one is prepared. The great mover renews the ages, rain, blood, milk, famine, steel, and plague. Is the heaven's fire seen a long spark running? Well, we are already seeing great trouble for humanity with the pandemic, so that part has already come true. And the pandemic has already forced millions of people to rely on food banks. But it's about to get much worse. Then he also predicted more natural disasters, and then finally it will all end with a zombie zombie apocalypse. Isn't that just peachy? In our sixth spot today, we have the futurists. A bunch of futurists believe that 2021 is the end of times, but they never told us how it's going to happen. They just predicted it and then left it as that. But here's the thing. Several months ago, people discovered that in the Ethiopian calendar, 2020 is actually 2012. And remember that huge scare we all had back in 2012 when everyone thought that the world was ending? Now clearly, that didn't happen, but if they're right, and the world is going to end in 2012, well, this year is 2012, which means we're all dead by 2021. Isn't that great? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Baba Vanga's predictions. Baba Vanga is another famous prophet in history. In fact, 85% of her predictions have come true, so she does have some legitimacy behind her name, which makes this next prediction very scary. For 2021 and the upcoming years, Baba Vanga predicted great disasters. She said, and I quote, the world will suffer from a lot of cataclysms and great disasters. The consciousness of people will change. Difficult times will come. People will be divided by their faith. We are witnessing devastating events that will change the fate and destiny of humanity. 
Great. Now she didn't say what exactly these devastating events are, but we should buckle our seatbelts. Because she also said that 2021 will be filled with great suffering and disasters. Coming in at number 4 today, we have the natural disasters. Climate change is a very serious issue. We're at the point of no return. And according to scientists, this means that we will be faced with more powerful, extreme, and deadly natural disasters. For example, we got wildfires. According to environmentalists, we are going to experience warmer and drier conditions and increased droughts, which wildfires thrive in. But we have more to worry about than just forest fires. Massive hurricanes and tsunamis will be on the rise. I mean, just recently we were hit with Hurricane Ida. This hurricane flooded New York City and New Jersey. They saw levels of rain they have never seen before. Residents were left trapped in flooded cars and basements, and tornadoes whipped through the air, destroying towns and homes. And like I said, it's only getting worse. Moving on to number three, we have the apocalypse. According to a number of different ancient Indian texts, they believe that time is comprised of four great seasons or yugas. The final one is called Kali Yuga. Some believe that this yuga is still thousands of years away, so we don't gotta worry, but others believe we're currently in this yuga, so we do gotta worry. Here's the thing. This is the final yuga. It's said to be filled with disaster and conflict and sin. It's also supposed to mark the end of the world. Towards the end of the yuga, there will be a third world war where millions of people worldwide will lose their lives. This will mark the apocalypse. The only good news is that the Kalki avatar will come to save the world and end the suffering and bring upon a new universe slash a golden age. Coming in at number two, we have disease X. This is an unknown disease that scientists believe and anticipate could wipe out all of mankind. They don't know what this disease is, but after analyzing the current state of our world, they are convinced it will happen in the near future. We are setting up the earth to be a perfect environment for a new outbreak to occur. World Health Organization Committee Science Advisor John Arne Rodigen says that the next big outbreak will be something that we haven't seen before. The World Health Organization then goes on to say that it's only a matter of time before a new extremely deadly disease wipes out the population. There are so many different strains of bacteria and viruses, they could easily just mutate and form a new, even deadlier disease. And in our number one spot today, we have the unbelievable weather pattern. Just last month, for the first time ever, rain fell on the summit of Greenland instead of snow. This is scary evidence that Greenland is warming at an alarming rate. Scientist Ted Scambo said, and I quote, What is going on is not simply a warm decade or two in a wandering climate pattern. This is unprecedented. Continuing on, he said, and I quote, We are crossing thresholds not seen in millennia. And frankly, this is not going to change until we adjust what we're doing to the air. A major UN climate report discovered that the burning of fossil fuels is what is leading to Greenland melting. In fact, Earth has lost 28 trillion tons of ice since the mid 1990s. That's a huge amount of ice in a small period of time. If the ice sheets keep going on this path and keep melting, the Earth could be destroyed before we know it. Starting off with number 10 is a comet or an asteroid. Well that was how our dear dinosaur friends were taken out and I bet we obviously already know that we are a lot weaker than them. If that happens again the human race could be a thing of the past. Now scientists have warned us that a planet busting comet could crash into the earth and wipe out humanity with less than six months warning. Scientists currently only know about 20,000 potentially dangerous comets despite there being up to one billion of them in our solar system. Right now NASA is currently keeping concern and eye on an asteroid named Bennu. The gigantic apocalypse asteroid could release 80,000 times more energy than the Hiroshima atomic bomb if it actually smashed into Earth. That could potentially end the race by sending dust into the atmosphere, which would block out the sun. Now, thankfully, most of the asteroids and comets currently posing a threat to us have very little chance of actually hitting Earth. And hopefully, by the time there is a risk of them hitting us, we'll be able to redirect them. Like, no, no, not the Milky Way. Andromeda is that way, buddy. At number nine, we have coronal mass ejection. Injections, also known as CMEs for short. Okay, okay, now I love summer. I love the sun. Summer is my favorite season. It just brings me happiness, you know, the the going to the beach, the patio drinking, the barbecues, the good music, and I'm just getting lost in my flashback. As much as we all love it, in the long run, it could be what brings us to our demise. Scientists say a powerful disaster-inducing geomagnetic storm is inevitable in the new future, likely causing blackouts, satellite failures, and 
more. The scariest part about all of this is that studies show that based on previous events, our planet will almost definitely be hit soon, probably within the next 100 years. Luckily, we have NASA's Advanced Composition Explorer to monitor space weather and provide warnings to Earth if a large CME is actually heading our way. The actual destruction is mostly speculative, but for starters, we can expect at least a complete shutdown of satellites. Hopefully that means at least people in the affected areas have time to flee, but I'm not even too sure about that. Coming in at number eight, we have super volcanoes. Now right now, there are about 1,500 active volcanoes in the world, and approximately 500 of which have actually erupted in recent history. Most of these volcanoes are relatively harmless to the human race, as very few people actually live within dangerous proximity of them. But none of those 1,500 active volcanoes are considered super volcanoes. There are approximately 20 known super volcanoes in the world spread out somewhat evenly across the Earth, although four are in North America. Now, luckily, these things only erupt once every 100,000 years on average, but these eruptions can be around 100 times worse than that of a normal volcano. The effects of such eruptions are similar to asteroid strikes, as mentioned earlier, in that they actually kick up enough ash to affect Earth's climate quite significantly. While an eruption likely won't completely wipe us out, the devastation would be far beyond what we are experiencing right now with COVID, and I mean, COVID's bad enough. At number seven, we have aliens. And there are so many ways our imaginations picture the reality of aliens, and I would love to know the actual reality. Now, I 100% believe there's other life out there in space other than us, because the universe is just way too big for us to be the only people in it. I refuse to believe that. Be careful what you wish for, because there is a possibility that coming into contact with them could mean the end of us. If there is a far more advanced species out there, maybe they're already watching us. As it stands right now, we certainly are no threat to some extraterrestrial super beings. We're literally fragile, puny little humans already fighting off a global pandemic and losing. But should we become far more advanced, maybe with AI, they may start seeing us as more of a threat. And if they are advanced enough, they may decide to rid themselves of this threat before it's too late. There are so many different ways to picture our interaction with aliens, but my hope is that we'll just be friends with them. You know, we come in peace. At number six, we have disease. COVID-19 is certainly the scariest thing to us at the moment, but the chances of it ending the world is pretty much zero. But there is always a threat that some future disease could be a lot, a lot worse. The worst case in recorded history is the Black Death, which killed 75 to 200 million people in the 1300s. While that did not entirely wipe us out, there's always a possibility that a virus or some other form of disease could somehow be immune to all of our efforts to stop it while also being 100% lethal. Luckily, our healthcare is quite good, so a black death sort of thing is unlikely, but anything is possible. I hope people learn from COVID by actually taking it seriously next time and actually listening to the warnings and staying home early. Let's just stay home, people. Coming in at number five, we have bioterrorism. Now, this is essentially similar to disease, except, of course, it's artificially produced. An artificial disease could prove to be far more deadly than one developed in nature because humans are behind it. They're the ones with the intent to want to kill and harm someone, and that intent makes a production all that much worse. If some psychopathic scientist was smart enough, they could produce a disease that would be super contagious and 100% fatal. There could essentially be no cure, no way of avoiding it, unless you locked yourself in a fallout shelter and just never left. While this is definitely a very scary possibility, the technology required to produce such a disease would hopefully enable the ability to create a defense against it, but I mean, that's just me hoping and speculating. You don't know what's out here, people. You don't know. Carol Baskin. At number four, we have colliding galaxies. Astrophysicists have predicted that in approximately 4.5 billion years from now, the Milky Way galaxy is set to collide with the Andromeda galaxy. With that being said, a number of things could occur when this collision happens. One of the first possible events is that the Earth gets flung out of orbit, rendering it unhabitable. I guess it's not just humans that are clumsy, it's clearly the Milky Way as well. Of course, massive collisions with other solar systems are other potential world ending events, but 4.5 billion years years is a really long time from now, so I don't think we have to worry. Maybe my great, 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 great grandkids will have to worry. But since this is the list for the end of the world, th that is an inevitable reality. It is going to happen. This one is backed by the most science on the list, and we definitely can't stop it from happening. Thankfully, I'll be long dead by then, and so will you, buddy. 
Cheers to that. Rolling into our number three slot, we have climate change. I'm sure you've heard about this a million times, especially from me, but seriously, we need to protect our planet and be eco-conscious, eco-friendly. I mean, if I'm gonna tug at your heartstrings, have you seen how cute baby polar bears are? Just a thought. Now from the crazy forest fires and the melting ice caps is no surprise that we are already getting the warning signs that climate change is killing the earth. But studies show the extreme weather such as heat waves will become more frequent and severe around the world, affecting hundreds of millions or even billions of people if we don't act. At some point, if this doesn't stop, we will no longer be able to populate the earth. Humans and the animal species around the world will not be able to populate it. Now the average North American citizen emits 20 tons of greenhouse gas emissions per year year. So this is very scary, but at least we can make a difference to slow down climate change, whether it's how we vote, carpooling, taking public transit, or whatever else. Drink almond milk, go vegan. I went vegan for two years because of climate change, then it screwed up my skin and I realized I was doing it wrong. But there are steps we can take, people. At number two, we have artificial intelligence. Listen, I love tech. It makes our life so much better, more efficient, but it's also leading to the demise of our species. I 100% believe that. We've been striving to advance our AI technology for so long, but maybe AI is just too good to be true. Artificial intelligence is progressing at a crazy rate. Scientists have stated that on average, there's a 50% chance of AI being able to perform most tasks as well as or even better than humans by 2050. They even say that there's at least a 5% chance of AI surpassing human intelligence a couple of years after that. And if they do become smarter than us, then honestly, what hope do we have? Honestly, no hope. It's over. And finally, at number one, we have nuclear war. Now this is currently one of the few ways humans could be solely responsible for almost the entire annihilation of human life. So I feel like this is the most immediate threat to the complete wipeout of humans. Nuclear fission weapons like atomic bombs and nuclear fusion weapons like thermonuclear or hydrogen bombs are capable of wiping out entire continents with a single blow. Take that in for a second. First, the impact alone can easily take out a large city in an instant, following which the radioactive debris is carried into the atmosphere only to fall back down to Earth in a shower of radiation referred to as fallout. Yes, that is where the game got its name for all you Fallout fans. Now, the deadliness of nuclear fallout has been well documented in Chernobyl and a nuclear weapon is capable of producing such effects at a much larger scale. The scariest part of all of this is that at one point in the history of the world, over 60,000 nuclear weapons were in the world. And while treaties have been signed lowering that number significantly, there is still enough to easily wipe out the world and probably the moon as well. And that scares me the most. At number 10 now, we're going to start with the one a lot of you guys might remember, 2012. December 21st, 2012 was the day that the ancient Mayan calendar would end and a new one would begin. Now, Some people took this to mean there would be a spiritual transition for the world, others thought it would mean the literal end of it. The theories for this range from giant tidal waves to crust shattering earthquakes. There was also the belief that the earth was going to collide with a mysterious planet X, or that the magnetic poles would shift on earth. It was all pretty crazy stuff but it caught on so much they even made it into a movie called 2012. Some of you guys may have seen it. Doesn't really have the same appeal now that we all survived it. Coming at number 9 now, we have the Prophecy Hen of Leeds. I love this one. Back in 1806, in the city of Leeds in England, a lot of people were convinced the world was going to end. They thought this because it was written on the freshly laid eggs of some hens. This is actually true. People from all over England went to visit Mary Bateman, whose hens were said to be laying eggs with the phrase, Christ is coming coming on them. People believed that this was a prophecy of doomsday, that Jesus was going to come back and start the end times. Well, 1806 came and went and the egg's words didn't actually come true. That's because Mary Bateman had faked them. She would write the messages on the egg and then insert them back up into the hens. I don't think the victims in this were the ones who believed all of it. I think it was the poor hens. All right, coming out number eight now, we have Y2K. Now, a lot of you guys may be too young to remember this, but in the run up to the new millennium in 1999, a lot of people were scared of Y2K. Experts have pointed out that a lot of computers in the world weren't 
actually programmed to handle the change in date from 1999 to 2000. It sounds kind of stupid now, but it's true. Some people thought that this would bring the end of the digital age before it had even begun. The computer systems all over the world would just break down. The Y2K would cause a virus fatal to every computer and pretty much send us back to the Stone Age. In the end, some computers did break or display the wrong date, but we got past it. Now we've just got to hope that we fix all of this before the year 3000. We've got a little bit of time. Next up at number seven now, we have Heaven's Gate. Now this one is dumb, but it's also kind of sad for me. See what you guys make of it though. In 1997, the Halley Bob comet appeared in the night sky, first time in thousands of years. A whole cult sprang up in San Diego who believed that an alien spacecraft was traveling behind the comet and that they had to get on board because the Earth was about to be wiped clean. They called themselves Heaven's Gate. Now they believe the only way to get to this spaceship was to leave their current vessels behind, which was their bodies. So on March 26th, 1997, 39 members of the cult drank poison and died. The leader of the cult was obviously a mentally ill psychopath who made a very dumb prediction. I just feel really bad for the people who went along with it. All right, next up at number six now, we have the Jupiter effect. In the mid 1970s, some people believed that the world was going to end on March 10th, 1982. This would be the date when all of the planets would perfectly align on the same side of the sun, even Pluto, which was a planet back then. They thought the gravitational effect of all the planets lining up would affect the Earth, leading to huge storms as well as earthquakes and volcanoes, the likes of which we have never seen before. The end of the world. Now all of this came from a book called The Jupiter Effect, the author of which went on to say later that he was sorry he ever had anything to do with it. As you can probably tell from today's date, the world did not end in 1982. Moving on to number five now, we have Robert Fitzpatrick. This man belonged to an evangelical group who believed that the world was going to end on May 21st, 2011. Now they had got this information from certain Bible passages and secret codes within them, and Robert decided he wanted to share this news with everyone. He then spent $140,000 of his own money traveling around America to warn other people that on this judgment day, the earth would be swallowed up by fires, earthquakes, and tsunamis. He said that only the righteous would be spared this fate by being sucked up into heaven. Robert gained quite a bit of fame in the lead up to this day and decided to prove everyone wrong in public by spending the very last hour in Times Square in New York. Now of course, when it didn't happen, he was mercilessly mocked by the crowd around him. He just sat there, kind of flicked through his Bible and kept saying he didn't understand why it hadn't happened. This is another one where I do feel kind of sad because this guy obviously had a serious disconnect from reality. All right, coming at number four now, we have Obama is the Antichrist. A lot of people really like President Obama. Some people didn't, but I think everyone can agree he was definitely a human. Well, not everyone, unfortunately. In 2008, when Obama was first elected, an email chain started spreading around the world. It said that according to the Bible, the Antichrist will be a man in his 40s of Muslim descent who will deceive the nations with persuasive language and have a massive Christ-like appeal. The prophecy says that people will flock to him and he will promise false home and world peace. And when he is in power, he will destroy everything. Is it Obama? Now, amazingly, a sizable amount of people People actually believe this rubbish and they really thought that Obama was the Antichrist who would destroy the world. What a sad thought. I'm glad they were wrong. Okay, coming out at number three now, we have the Black Rainbow. Jerron Criswell Koenig was a popular American psychic who died in 1982. Now, throughout his life, he made a lot of quite strange predictions. For example, he said there would one day be cannibalism in Pennsylvania and that a great drought would leave New York in ruins. But perhaps his strangest prediction was the Black Rainbow. Criswell said that on Wednesday, August 18th, 1999, every point on Earth would be covered by a black rainbow, the darkest black you can imagine. The black rainbow will then start sucking up the oxygen from our atmosphere like a huge snake suffocating its prey. For the next few hours, we will all grow weaker and weaker as we couldn't breathe. And then we will all go silently, gasping for breath, and there will be only silence on the Earth. Huh. Lovely stuff. Well, I had my birthday not long after that day, and I remember the oxygen levels were pretty fine. Had some nice cake too. All right, moving on to number two now. We have Baba Vanga. This Bulgarian woman who died in 1996 had the catchy name of Nostradamus from the Balkans. She made a bunch of different predictions, but one in particular stood out World War III. She even gave the year this would happen 2016. She said the continent of Europe would be left almost empty after being turned into a nuclear wasteland 
almost entirely devoid of any life forms. I mean to be fair now with the way the past few years have been going a nuclear war hasn't seemed quite so crazy as it used to be. Hopefully if any of you guys are watching this years from now things will have calmed down a little bit. But still she said 2016 so she was wrong technically. Sorry Bubba. And finally at number 1 now guys we have Pat Robertson. He is an American minister who is known for his evangelical Christian TV shows. Now one of his shows was called the 700 Club and in late 1976 he made a doomsday prediction on it. He said that in October or November 1982 the world would end. 4 years later he clarified this by saying I guarantee you by the end of 1982 there is going to be a judgement on the world. Obviously like everything else on our list he was so sorely mistaken. But it wasn't all doom and gloom. In 2011 Robertson and other people who incorrectly predicted the end of the world were awarded the IG Nobel Prize, teaching the world to be careful when making mathematical assumptions and calculations. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. A little bit of a burn. Mm -hmm.